What you are looking at right now is a traffic simulation that behaves how cars would actually behave. Here you can see a demo of what we're gonna be making, right? So the cars don't move past each other and the front car needs to move before anything else moves. But let's make this thing ourselves. By the way, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. We'll talk about that later. So go to geometry nodes, delete everything, add in an object and make that a geo nodes object. We're gonna start by deleting everything and we are going to replace it with a curved line. We're gonna have this end at x equals 10. It starts at zero, ends at 10, and then I'm going to resample it so that there's 10 points so that each car is kind of like spaced out by one. I'm gonna need some like spheres or something like that. So I am going to instance on points. It's going to be a UV sphere, tinier UV spheres. So we are gonna open our simulation zone because we are going to do a simulation. And you might be tempted to kind of use the simple approach where we set position for what? For the end point, specifically only end size is equal to one. By the way, this is why we used a curve line so that we could access the endpoints. So your instinct might be to take the selection and then add a bit of offset on every frame, which does indeed move it, but it doesn't look realistic, right? It's moving all the time. In reality, things move relative to acceleration and forces. We are going to offset this by a custom vector that we are gonna change over time. We're gonna call that V for velocity. And now we need to define uh, what velocity is. To do that, we are gonna store named attribute. That's gonna be a vector v. Again, this is going to be equal to itself. So v is equal to v. Kind of weird. But on every frame, we are going to add a component to that. And that component is going to be a, in other words, our acceleration. So we're moving a position relative to a velocity and we're updating this velocity relative to an acceleration. Of course, we're gonna need to define this acceleration. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put in a raw value like 0 0.001. And when we play this, you can see this car is moving, but it's actually accelerating. But again, this is accelerating forever. It shouldn't be doing that. So what we can do is we can make a conditional. So we can say that this is gonna accelerate by 0.001. 001 under a certain condition. That condition is just gonna be a source of randomness. So I'm gonna take a noise texture and we're gonna say if this factor is let's say greater than 0.5, in other words, if this noise texture is bigger than a half, which will happen roughly half the time, then we are going to take this result and multiply it by 0.01. When we play, you can see nothing happens, but that's because the noise isn't updating. We take this W slider, which stands for change and we're going to use time to change it over time and i really want you to remember that we are to divide this by a big number because it's just going to go on integers frame one two three etc now it's actually behaving correctly i think so we need to make sure that this is able to slow down also disable normalize okay so to decelerate this i'm going to add a force of friction you can think of this as the wheels being on the road and you're losing a bit of energy on every single frame just take the velocity we're going to do the super simple and you are gonna scale it by something close to one, like 0.98, every frame it loses 2%. So you can see it speeds up and then it slows down and then every once in a while, it's going to get another boost of gas. So imagine that you're this car here and you're just trying to get to work or to the birthday party or whatever, and you're trying to go down this road. First of all, you're not allowed to go past this car. That's called a car crash. You would not want that. And the second rule is if this car is like, you know, pretty far in the distance, you're allowed to move a little. What I wanna know is the position of the next one over. So to do that, we are gonna evaluate on index for the index, remember every point has its own number called the index, we're going to take this index and add one we're going to evaluate its position since that's what we want to know about. And then finally, we take the position, the position of the next one, and we calculate the distance. And what we're going to say is if the distance is bigger than some number smaller than one, so we could say like 0.3 or 0.5, then it should start accelerating. In other words, we're going to take this distance, we're going to check if it's greater than something like 0.3. And under that condition, we're going to add some acceleration. And we're going to say for this selection, so if it's greater than 0.3, we are going to increase the acceleration by, I guess we use 0.01. And when I hit play, you can see again, only the first car is moving, but now it's accelerating a lot more than if I did not have this enabled, meaning uh, that this is kind of 
adding an acceleration we don't want, we can take this acceleration term, the second one, and put it behind the first one. Because if we kind of map this to the same thing, we're first going to update our acceleration based on the distance gap. And then no matter what the last car, or rather the first car gets, we're then going to overwrite that. But none of these other cars are moving. What's going on? They should be moving. Well, this is because our set position, which says update the position, is only happening for the very last point on the curve. So just delete that. And then all of a sudden, yes, they're all moving. Take this acceleration and obviously this needs to be a bit less. So now they don't speed up as much, but of course they don't have any way to slow down either. Because of that, I'm gonna make one more acceleration term. And for this one, we're not gonna use greater than, we're gonna check if this distance is less than some amount. So for example, if this car is getting within some threshold of the next car, if it's getting too close, then we should start decelerating. And this should be a number semi close to one. So I'm gonna make it 0.7. And under that condition, we're gonna accelerate, but using the negative. So it's going to slow down. Okay, so you can see that these cars are trying, right? They're definitely buffering a little, but they kind of overshoot and go past uh, each other. The first thing and kind of the most obvious thing you can do is you can have the cars slow down a bit faster. To do that, we just increase this acceleration. What you're gonna notice is if you look closely, some of these cars actually go a bit backwards. And that's because our acceleration is going in the other direction, which means eventually our velocity is going to do the same thing. So we wanna take our velocity term that's getting updated by acceleration. And we wanna say, take the maximum of this compared to zero. So now when we play this, again, it's not perfect, but it's behaving much better than it did before. I'm gonna take my acceleration acceleration and bring it even more down. And another thing I'm noticing is the first car is moving so often that none of these cars could catch up to it. And instead of greater than 0.5, let's say it's greater than like 0.56. Now to make this look more interesting, every single car is behaving the same way. We should have some of the drivers behave differently. Some of them have a longer response time. They don't notice when the car in front of them is moved or they brake more than the others, stuff like that. Instead of having this greater than 0.3, let's say that this can go between 0.25 and 0.35. And similarly for 0.7, let's do 0.65 to like 0.75. Additionally, we can make it so that they don't all accelerate at the exact same speed. Set this one to vector and change the seed. And since we only want the X component, let's have it go from this number to this number divided by like 0.7 and connect that there. Okay, we didn't want any of the Z or Y component. Okay, so they're all behaving a bit more randomly. Let's take this UV sphere that's representing the points and replace it with a car model. It's a pretty simple model, but I think it's going to be good enough for our purposes. And now in our geometry nodes, just import in the car model. But of course, they're too big. And you can see that because they're intersecting with each other. I'm going to scale these by an amount such that none of them pass through each other. Okay, so I played with some of the settings and I like the way this looks. The cars are responding the way they're supposed to. So you can go to the description and download the blend file for this if you don't want to make it yourself. I make most of my projects available there that you can just snag. And now a sponsored message from our sponsor, Squarespace. If you haven't heard about Squarespace, you should have because it is the fastest and the easiest and the most beautiful way to make a website. Your website is basically this template that is made out of blocks that you can just drag around to design your website. And here are three features I know that you will love about Squarespace. First of all, you got analytics so you know who is going to your website, which is important. Second of all, you have a content library, which saves every image, video, anything you've used in your website. You can think of it as a hard drive in the cloud that I found useful. And then third of all, and this is the most obvious feature, is that designing with Squarespace is super easy. It's intuitive. You just drag around blocks and it works. So head over to Squarespace to design your website. And when you are ready to take that thing live, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.